Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So, Father, we ask that you breathe on this word I bring to your people in Jesus' name and that your name will continue to be glorified. You know, we were looking at the accounts from Judges chapter 20. There are different aspects of that account that we can look at. We can look at the actual events that happened. Hallelujah. We can look at the consequence of, of how the, 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 the priest, the Levite, responded or handled the case. And we can look at the response of the children of Israel to a pressing matter, a matter that did not represent their household. Amen. And that's really where I want us to focus on today. Um, the different aspects of, the, of that account that we can really deliberate on to look at. But I want to look at not just their response, but how they handled it. Because we have been looking at how we honor the Lord in the marketplace. This morning in the clubhouse room, I mentioned that David had to deal with wicked and um, Bible calls them on, um, on, but not unreasonable, um, but this is scripture. Scripture call them wicked and something else. Let me let me find that. I like I like using the right words. <laughs> some for some reports or some accounts. Hallelujah. But they definitely call them wicked men, you know, and you would wonder how is it that here we are, here we are, um, where these are men that were surrounded by David or there were they were with David. But scripture calls them wicked and worthless men. The new King James Version. They were wicked and worthless men. They were among their people. They were among David. They went to war with David. They won the battle with David. But that was how they were described. And I was sharing with us how do we deal with difficult people that might not like us that we might not like, but yet we have to work with them. Yet they have to work with us. We don't have a choice. God can put us in such squires or such circles, hallelujah, or such incidences where it might not be the way we want it, but he would use that either to build us capacity, help us to build wisdom, help us to just learn how to deal with people, hallelujah. And when you're in the marketplace, you cannot predict who you're going to see tomorrow. You're serving someone. You just don't know who you're going to be serving. You don't know what kind of atrocities somebody else would have done, yet you have to work with it. You know, so we're looking at that this morning. And I continue, if you were not in the room, or maybe you were in the room, but you were sleeping, I would encourage you to go back and listen to that part of the, you know, the, the session so that you will build capacity because God is strengthening us Jesus said to us, hallelujah, from Matthew chapter 10 and the 16, that I send you, which has been the anchor scripture, that I send you as sheep among wolves. Okay? Thank God, even when they spoke, David did not adhere. He did not listen. He did not take their counsel. At this time, he needed them for the battle. But what they now advised him to did not take that counsel because it wasn't wise. It did not represent who they were. It did not represent who he is you know, as a king. Hallelujah. Thank God for his generosity. And so I'm bringing this to us because something had happened within the household of Israel. We did not represent them. We did not represent them. Hallelujah. And justice needed to be done. You know, what do we do when we're in the marketplace and your colleague has done something or your colleague has, you know, um, mismanaged something. Your colleague, hallelujah, do not help me. In the name of Jesus, amen. Oh. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Okay. So we're dealing with um, somebody has, you know, has done a gross misconduct and done a gross misconduct and it's not our representation. It's not our representation. I pray that the Lord will give us boldness. One, hallelujah, first of all, to inquire of him and boldness to handle such situations. So Israel was caught in a situation where wickedness, something that was, you know, this is more than the gross misconduct. The Bible calls it another, um, I think the New Living Translation that we just read calls it a criminal act. 
it was a criminal act that had been done. And this man made a point for them to see how bad it was. And here we are in a situation where they came. The Bible says they came in one accord. I love that. And I use that to pray concerning something else. But they came as one in one mind. They were not saying, it's not me. You know, sometimes when something's happening, everybody's God in their own territory. Well, it's not me. You know, I have that with my children. It's not me. It's you. It's not you. It's me. It's not me. Well, we don't have a stranger in the house. Somebody would have done it, by the way, <laughs> among us. So who's going to take responsibility? So everybody passed the buck and say, well, it's not me. It's not me. It's not me. And sometimes even those that are there, they say, it's not me. So that they'll just think that it would be swept under the carpet. But here they were. They took responsibility. Who has done this? What happened? Why has it been done? Or why would they do such a thing? The Bible said they came as one man. They were not divided in their language. They were not divided in their spirit. They were not divided in their minds. Hallelujah. And I pray for us as children of God. Hallelujah. When we find ourselves in the marketplace, when you're able to connect with the kingdom, brother and sister, we'll be of one mind. Amen. You know, there could be things that are happening in the company that you're dealing with, hallelujah, that you might not be able to address like the children of Israel address this here, but it doesn't mean that you cannot take it to the Lord. Hallelujah, somebody. You are there as a priest and as a spiritual representation. Some of you are actually in your marketplace, in your company as a spiritual covering. People don't, maybe you yourself don't, I just, I just came, I just need money. I've just come for, just do my job, get my pay and leave. But God has positioned you there for a reason. And we have been so short-sighted that we can't see why we are there. But from this day forward, I pray that the veil is removed and your eye is open to see the reason why God has positioned you in that company, in that marketplace. Hallelujah. You are not just there to just get your money and to leave. You're not just there to pass time. Sometimes we take some things and just go to pass time. You're not there, you know, to just see what would happen if I'm going to stay or if I'm going to leave. Every moment of your life has been ordained by the Lord. And that's why we have to maximize every single moment. The Bible says that all things work together for the good of those that love the Lord. Your responsibility with that account of that scripture is to love the Lord. It's not to work the things out for your good. Our responsibility is to love the Lord. When we love him, he now causes all things to work for our good. So I'll give you a very quick example of a situation that I was, hallelujah, where I share that briefly, but I haven't probably gone into details, where the company that I, I was, the business that I was managing for my profit, someone was about to do something, basically they were going to defraud my profit. To sell the company, he was representing, standing there, and like he was the owner of the business. And a day had been appointed where he brought investors. The full meeting had been organized. Somebody said, Pastor Prince, teach the man. I was loyal to my prophet. Hallelujah. And I said, something is about to take place, sir, that you have to be present today. 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 Now, up until now that I'm speaking to you, you won't even know, so you can't go and tell somebody else. Was praised, I think. Up until now that I'm speaking to you, no one knew who did the, 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 the act. Who blew the trumpet? No one knew. No one knew who did that. Because I was I was watching over that business diligently. And even, you know, the when when people, God has put you in a place of responsibility, may He count us worthy to handle some things. Please. And may he also count us whether to trust us with information that we would manage with care. Some of us, we don't know how to guard information. And to be precise, I'm hearing it coming out. We don't know how to guard our mouth. May the Lord help us. Because if you're put in a place, in a very delicate place, very delicate situation, you don't know how to guard your mouth, you would, you can be put into trouble yourself and you'll be left by yourself. 
Because some people just wash their hands and say, I, I, I know what you're just talking about. And there's no evidence for you to say, when well, it was you, when it was you, there was, then it will just get us into problems. But I pray for maturity in the name of Jesus because a certain place that God has put us is because he counts on us. He's counting on us. I had to, he, he does, I mean, at the time, my prophet did not, he wasn't based in the UK. He came and no one knew he was in town. He knew the time of the meeting and he showed up and everyone was in a state of shock. Like, even the guy that had set up everything was like, oh, hello, sir, you, yes. And he went into the meeting. I was not part of the meeting. But I was not going to see something that he had labored for. This man had made earnest investment. Earnest investment. See it wash out of his hands just like that. And as the Lord would have, it was that same day that I was promoted. I didn't do that because I thought I was good. I didn't even know that was going to happen. And God is my witness. I didn't know. My motive behind it was like, you cannot labor for something and somebody comes and snatches it from your hand like that. It can't happen. Not under my watch. Not under my watch. The same standard we can take for anything else that God has put in our care. Whether it's the children, whether it's finances, whether it's a project, take a stand. If he has positioned you to look after that, let him count on you. That it doesn't matter what might happen. You might, pressure might happen. When, you know, some people, sometimes we're so tempted. People want to bribe us. People want us to, 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 to you know, negotiate, not negotiate, compromise. People might want us to compromise. Say, well, you're on our side. Just come, you know, don't worry. We'll share the shares. We will we'll, we'll, we'll share the profit. We'll just, brethren, if God has positioned you there, I pray that we would remain faithful. I pray that we will stand for what is right. Now, the very interesting thing about this this encounter or this uh, this account is that even when Israel was standing for what is right, and they had prayed, and the Lord told them to proceed to go ahead in the name of Jesus, Hallelujah. Their first encounter was a loss. Their first encounter was a loss. Now, you know that, oh my God, when you know and you know and you know that God has spoken, you would, what would you, what would you expect in your first encounter? A victory, right? Success, right? Everything is sorted out because I know God spoke to me. I know God told me. I know he gave me the divine strategy. I know he gave me the go. I heard his voice. There was a witness. There was three or more witnesses, not even two or three, three or more witnesses. Everybody resonated that this was the instruction of the Lord. And everybody came fortified with their swords, ready to fight. But their first encounter was that Benjamin overcame and killed some of their men. Now, it was a situation where you think, but no, that can't be right. That can't be right. God even told them, let Judah go first. So it was specific instruction that was given. Maybe you've been in that situation where you had God, you knew it was God all the way. And you stepped out that next morning. You stepped out that day. You took that application form. You took the application form, not just for the job, maybe for a loan, maybe for, 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 for mortgage, maybe for, for, for something, something, for grants, maybe whatever. You took the application. You heard God. You took the application. You applied for that thing. Boldly. Because the Lord had said, and I heard the man of God say this morning, and then you get that, unfortunately, not a congratulations, not we are pleased to let you know, but unfortunately at this time, unfortunately at this time, 
We have considered your, your, your application, but unfortunately at this time, that would be the first deflating situation that you would have felt or first deflating feeling you feel like, oh, but I don't God. But he said, but there was confirmation. But the Bible says that the people, the men of Israel, they encouraged themselves and form the battle line at the place where they had put themselves in array on the first day. This is not the first time that we've seen somebody encouraging himself. David in, in 1 Samuel chapter 30, when he was faced with another situation regarding Ziglag, where the, where the people had been taken. The Bible says they met and they cried, they cried so badly. They even wanted to stone David. How can we go to battle and everything that we have has been stolen? But praise God that David encouraged himself in the Lord. Here we are, this man. They didn't question God. I say, why would you set us up? Why would you send us if you know we were going to fail? Why would you send us if you know it was not going to work out? They were going to kill our men. Is it you? Are you sure? They encourage themselves in the Lord. Someone, including myself, if things did not go the way you expected, but you knew that God had spoken. You knew that he said yes. You knew that he said handle that business. You knew that he said show up for that meeting. You know that he said, pick up the phone and call. You knew that he said, take up that job and take up, move, do something, whatever he's given to us to do. And at the first instant, the result that you were expecting did not go according to your plan. I want to encourage every one of us, and I'm including myself, for us to encourage ourselves. So we knew it was God that spoke. Let us do a reset. Let us come again. The Bible says they form the battle line again. Let us take our stand again. They didn't say maybe we missed it the last time. Who, who, who was here that wasn't meant to? You know, all the time, oh, most of the times we're looking for who to blame. Blame, 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 blame. It may be when we can't blame anybody, we blame ourselves. And then discouragement kicks in. And then we hide, end up under a table. Might not be a literal table, but we end up hiding like Gideon. Well, if I'm really called, why, why is this going on with my household? The Bible says they gather themselves together again. And they formed the battle line at the place where they had a failure. At the place where it didn't go according to their plans. They stood again. God is calling someone to stand again. God is speaking to someone to stand up again. God is expecting us by the help of the Spirit to encourage ourselves. Hallelujah. To take a stand. Even if you need to ask again, Lord, you gave us the word. It was you that gave us the word. The Bible says they asked again. They wept before the Lord. Because obviously when their men died, who would not, who would be happy to see your men die in the place of war? They wept until the evening. Ask the Lord, shall we go again, draw near the battle against the children of my brother, Benjamin? Should we go again? Should we go against them? Because what has happened does not represent us. And when we stepped out, we knew it was you that spoke. Should we go again? The Bible says, the Lord said, go up against him. God was setting up the Benjamin, the Benjamites. 
but they did not know. And so there are times when it might look that the enemy is winning against you. They're not winning. It's a setup. It's a setup. It might look like. You know, I believe that's why the Lord said to us during the week that we are positioned where we are for our next level. Joseph's brothers thought that they were, they had had fun. They had thrown the brother away. They got rid of the, the father's favorite. They didn't know it was a setup. Potiphar's wife thought that, yeah, I got him into prison. He didn't want to sleep with me. Now I've shown him who I am. He didn't know it was a setup. Even the butler forgot about Joseph. He didn't do it intentionally. But it was a setup. Nothing around us happens by chance. All things will work for the good of them that love the Lord. The Lord is encouraging us in the name of Jesus. Because in this walk of faith, the times when it looks like, you know what, Father, we pray, we fasted, we did, yeah, yeah, we pray, we just do. Bam, bam, everything is happening. Praise God. No. Come back and think, what happened? What happened to the job? What happened to the application? What happened to the business? I thought, I thought the Lord said, yes, the Lord said. Yes, the Lord said. I just need to just make sure that I'm in the right place. The Lord said, go again. Go again. Go against them. So on the second day, the Bible says they went out. Many of their men were killed. Many of 18,000 or more children where they drew their sword. Killed. Now this was not child's day, brethren. This was not a movie. This was not spiritual battle. This was physical. This was a bloody event. War that was taking place. And in their own household, this was not against, <laughs> this was not against strangers. You know, you say, oh, the Amorites, the, the, the Hevites, the, the Perizzites, the Canaanites. This was in their own. This was among themselves. Among themselves, brethren. That must be tough. That must have been a that must have been a tough situation. Because when I got this is our own brother that you are sending us to go and fight again. But you have given us a go ahead. And I made a dying. The Bible says they went up and came back to the house of the Lord and wept. They were there before the Lord. This time they upped their game. The first time they wept till evening. The next time they upped their game and they added fasting to it. So when the fire goes up or when things intensify, brethren, it's not time to throw in the towel. It's not time to give up. It's time to press harder. It's time, I've said it here before and I've said it again, to call for reinforcement, to press harder. This time they said, let's add fasting to it. Maybe we didn't fast. We were just crying to the Lord and we heard him. This time, they didn't give up. They didn't go well. Second time, well, maybe it was a familiar spirit. Maybe it wasn't God. They went again to the Lord. They upped their game in fasting. They brought an offering. Anything that we need to bring, they were not approaching God with any form of accusation. Please, I'm begging of you, do not approach God with any kind of accusation. Jesus said, blessed are those who are not offended by me. Even if it looks like, Lord, but you said it is not happening the way you said, do not allow offense. You know, I was saying this morning that the Lord, that the man of God mentioned somebody was Ahitophel that he said, he said Ahitophel did his, his heart was not prepared or his heart was not, did not have capacity to deal with offense. Hallelujah. Things might not go the way you expect, but God is in charge. This time they didn't just show up. They said, Lord, we will fast. We will bring an offering, a peace offering, a burnt offering. They brought it. You can't bring an offering before the Lord with an offended heart. The Bible says, even if you find somebody who's offended against you, put it down and go and sort it out. So you can't even bring an offering before the Lord with a heart of offense. They brought it. They were like, whatever we need to do, we will do it. Because we heard God. 
And the Bible says yet again, they ask, shall I yet again go out to battle against the children of my brother, Benjamin? Are we on the right track or should we stop? And the Lord said, and this is verse 28, go up for tomorrow. I will deliver them to your hand. I will deliver them into your hand. And right as Pastor Joy said earlier, this time they use another strategy, but they did not relent. They did not give up. They went. They set ambush. The Lord gave them wisdom on what to do. So the Israelites at this time, sorry, the, the, the Benjamites at this time, they thought, ah, we are winning like usual, as usual. They were defeated before us as, as, as at first, but the children of Israel said, let us flee and draw them from the city and highway so that when they would arrive, they would think that we are not the set ambush. They changed their strategy. The most important thing is that you remain in your position. Even if you need to change your strategy, don't give up. Don't give up. Something very simple. Why did you buy a cup of tea? Oh, I'm, I'm stopping by the shop. Would you like a cup of tea? Somebody that don't don't like you. Would you like me to get something from the shop? Why is she asking me? Change your strategy. Sometimes it could be big things. Sometimes it could be little things. Oh, should we go for lunch? You know they don't like you. But why are you taking me to lunch? Oh, let's just have lunch. You don't even know what will be given, the information will be given. You don't know God will use that to even change the heart of that person towards you. But if we're so filled up with so much, so much, so much offense, we will not be able, we will not have capacity to change our strategies and use wisdom to prevail. I would say, he say this time, it didn't put in the change strategy, but we would see that they set ambush. Because when ambush is set, if you know about military, they, you, that's why the colors of the military is green, so that they can hide in grass. So when men are lying, and I don't know even how they did it at that time, to, to, to disguise themselves. When men are laying in ambush, you won't see all you can see is trees. Who knows if they even, they, they dress themselves with grass to lay down in it. Maybe that's where the, the military took the colors from because the, maybe the old, the olden days, men used to cover themselves with grass. I'm just speaking out of inspiration right now as, as I'm speaking to us. But the point I'm making that they laid ambush, which means you can't see, you look like, oh, they're not there. But they were there. So when Jesus even said, I send you like sheep among wolves, be wise as a serpent and gentle as a dog. We've seen the explanation, you know, if you've been here in the previous messages of preach, they lay down like they're not there. A snake can enter into a room. Nobody would know that they're there. Quietly. But it doesn't mean that they don't have a target. It doesn't mean that they're not on a mission. We're not snakes in Jesus' name. Jesus said, be wise as us. Not that we should be in the name of Jesus. Take the lesson. Learn from the dog. Learn from the serpent. Take strategies from them so that you can win. So that you will not be taken by the end. You will not be consumed. This time, they lay ambush. They were there, but they, like, they were not there. But they were there. And so the Benjamites saw that, yes, we are winning like usual. But they didn't know. And this time, God was going to hand them over to their brothers because of the atrocity that they had done. I'm going to leave this with us today in the name of Jesus. It's time for us to go again. It is not time for us to give up. We saw that the first time they looked like it looked like they were defeated. The second time it looked like they were defeated. The third time, it also looked like the Benjamin thought, ah, when the men of Israel turned back, he said the men of Benjamin panicked. But now they saw that their disaster had come upon them. They looked like, oh, we're winning like usual. They didn't realize that the children of Israel 
for the men of Israel had changed their strategy. Just when the enemy thinks that he has won over you, God is going to give you victory. God is going to turn the situation around. The Lord will raise someone that will speak on your behalf. He will raise someone that will vindicate your cause. He will raise someone that will defend you. He will raise someone that will stand for you and say, not her, not him. She must take this place. Amen. Amen. She must take this job. Amen. This property. Amen. That must be written off. Amen. She must have joy. Amen. She must be settled. Hallelujah. There are people that people are speaking to disqualify you, but just when they're about to speak again, God will Amen. raise someone that will say, Not this time. Wow. Not her. She Amen. must go forward. She Amen. must be released. She must Amen. be positioned for what I have for her. In Amen. the name of Jesus, Amen. her name must be cleared. Her name must be, his name must be cleared. In the Amen. name of Jesus, no Amen. one would hinder his marriage. No one would hinder her marriage. No one would hinder their children. No one would stop their blessing. Amen. 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 in the earth, even yeah. in, the, in, the, in, the, in the meeting. And she came and she said, thank you, Pastor. She said, know. thank you. Yeah. I looked at her I said, now let me tell you. I said, sometimes my best moments are my worst moments. Yes, amen. Mm -hmm. When I am most challenged, I show up like a mm -hmm. warrior. Mm -hmm. And I said, nothing is going to put me down. I will still stand up there and do what I need to do. Amen. I don't care what the devil throws at me. 
I remember there was a time when I was so challenged. I went into the office with, with, with whatever was happening at that time. I was in tears because I was so distressed. I was meant to be in worship that day. You would have thought that after all that crying, I would have come and I would want to sit down in one quiet place and say, I can't be first to worship today because I came out and the man of God that came out and looked at me. I would never forget the expression that says, he looked at me and he smiled and shook his head. Like, look at this girl. She was crying in that room just now. And then she's warring at the altar. I walk because that is my place of assignment that the enemy cannot do anything about. Amen. So don't you think that when we show up it's because everything is perfect? No, we are walking the good warfare. Uh, we are walking the good warfare. Yeah. We think that it looks like we fell and we've shown up again. We've shown up against strong and mighty because God is not as a mighty, terrible one. We show up strong. We show up confident. We show up knowing because it says go again. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Single woman, tell yourself, hallelujah, irrespective of my age, I will marry. Oh, if amen. If the first marriage fails or not, I will marry again. Hallelujah. Amen. Jesus. Hallelujah. Yes. Whether I've been pregnant before and I lost the baby, I will be pregnant again. Jesus. Jesus. Whether I have had a job and I lost it, I will go for another one. In the name Amen. of Jesus. Whether I started that business Jesus. and it failed or did not work out, but God said I should go again, I will go again. Amen. Do ever give up in life. Amen. I charge you by the help of the Spirit. Don't you ever give up in life. Amen. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Don't you ever give up. God is not ex In fact, the truth of the matter is, the Bible says it's those that overcome that will be given a crown. Amen. That is the truth of the matter. God has nothing to do with us who quit. Because he's not expecting you to quit. He's not expecting you to give up. Mm. Because he is expecting his grace to for you to know that his grace is sufficient for you. Mm. Mm. That's what he's expecting. So we press on. So we show up again. Mm. The, the Israelites they gather themselves, they show up again in the line of battle. Mm. The second time they were defeated, they went again, they added fasting, they added an offering. Hallelujah. And they showed up again the third time. Mm -hmm. This third time, mm -hmm. hallelujah, God mm -hmm. indeed. Mm -hmm. he, he did, in the first time, he didn't fail. He was setting the enemy up. The second time, he didn't fail. He was always, he was mm -hmm. just mm -hmm. for them to come. Think that they are confident in their wrong. Like Sister Wee said, they were wrong. They didn't apologize. They, they were no remorseful. Do the fact that they were said we are wrong, we are sorry, Lord have mercy upon us. Here's the offering, a peace offering, a bond of whatever. They are the people that should have been born bringing an offering before the Lord that we have done wrong. But they mm. were so confident in their arrogance, so arrogant in their behavior. Well, mm. yeah, whatever. But God wasn't having it. Those who think that they have power, power belongs to the Lord. Mm. Let's, pray. Mm. Let's pray. Let's pray. Mm. Let's pray. Lord, I thank you for your word. Thank you for the charge that you are giving to every single one of us. The pressure Amen. is there. It looks like we're failing, but we know Amen. that you are with us, my God. Amen. Amen. Lord, it looks like things are falling apart, but we know that you are with us. Amen. It looks like, Lord, the enemy is winning, but we know that you are with us. Lord, we might have moments where we might just want a reassurance that it's truly you that has asked us to go. It's Amen. truly you that has called us. It is yes. truly you. Oh my God. Brethren, <laughs> hallelujah. The last time that we were given a notice where we were meeting, Pastor mm -hmm. Icy and the Julia, they were there. I told them in the condition, I'm not looking for another place for the church. I said, I'm not. I was oh. not offended. I said, Lord, if it's truly you, then you will find a place. But I'm not looking. Someone said to me, maybe God has not called you. Maybe you need to go and check. Is it truly the Lord? All these things that are going on. That was the day that I said, Lord, I think I need to just move. Now, now, now. Oh, oh Jesus. Jesus, I can't be speaking to Oh, God. <laughs> I thought you. And he wants to use you to fill my mind. Oh, no, 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 no. And what had happened was somebody very close to me. And this thing happened it was a delicate situation. I said, Lord, this is your work. This is your work. They would say they are moving. Five within within the short time uh, space of time. We had to move. We had to move. What would they say? Lord, 
I'm not finding a place. Brethren, I was called. I was called. Somebody said, woman of God said, we hear that you're looking for a place. I did not call her. I didn't even know how the other person found the God information. So we hear that you're looking for a place. Come and see myself and my husband. We cannot hear that you don't have a place of worship. And we have a place and not make it available to you. Hmm. That was how we got our last place. It looked like everything was falling apart. Hmm. But God has been with us. Amen. Are we not here? Yes. Are we not growing? Mm. What that the Lord is doing on Clubhouse is not for people to it's not for me to go and show people in the public. You and I know how he what he's doing and how he's connected us. Where it looks like things are falling apart because he knew lockdown was coming. He knew lockdown was around the corner because the, the, the COVID situation is not new to God. He saw it way ahead of time. It's also we're not keen into the spirit to know exactly what he was going to do, what was going to happen. But did, has he not preserved his church? <laughs> Hallelujah. Has he not us to make great exploits? People that are in this room who will never have met, never have connected. Maybe you would have found another way. But the relationships that have been established here, and a solid, solid relationship that have been established, it would never have happened. What the enemy thought, I'm scattering the people of God. They won't have place. I'm destabilizing them. God was just looking. And he says, he who sits on the throne laughs. So, <laughs> look at you. I created you. My errand boy. Satan is an errand boy to the Lord. Yes. Mm. Hallelujah. I want you to be rest assured. I want you to be rest assured. And if he said, go again, go again. Amen. Your people, Lord. I pray that you give us capacity to be encouraged, to encourage mm. ourselves, to hold on to ourselves. Mm. To be, I would say they were like one. They were not divided. Mm. And they were not divided. They didn't pass the blame. They didn't find faults among themselves. They just encouraged themselves. They fasted. They brought their offering. And they went again. Give us mm. that room, God. Give us that capacity. Now, irrespective of what it looks like on the outside. Mm. Irrespective of God, of the casualties of wars or situations. That we will come, we will bind up our wounds, we will encourage ourselves, we will heal the wounds. Lord, we will cause our, ourselves to, you know, make ourselves laugh. But we will go again. And you will give us victory, a permanent victory that no one will be able to contend with. Amen. The, and the praise of your name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And I love you all. And I celebrate every single one of you. Amen. Amen. Jesus' name. Amen. 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 I hand over the mic to Basile.